Toby, over here, those people who walk by the television and look at the headlines, apparently trust uh, your coalition went away because of tax cuts and uh, energy and something or other. We're not quite clear. Explain it for us. What happened? Yeah, I'm not sure I'm terribly clear myself. Um, <laughs> events have been moving very quickly um, here in the UK. Um, but Liz Truss was elected leader of the Conservative Party about six weeks ago. Um, after a protracted three-month-long leadership contest. Um, and uh, she's already resigned, making her the shortest-serving prime minister in British history. Um, and uh, things started to go wrong uh, almost from day one. Um, the uh, turning point seemed to be the mini-budget she announced, um, uh, or rather her chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, announced, um, in which not only was... Uh, the government offering up to £200 billion of support to help people pay their energy bills because energy prices are skyrocketing over here in Europe. But in addition, £45 billion of tax cuts um, and no proposal um, uh, to cut public expenditure or no real um, idea, seemingly, in the mini-budget of how the British government was ever going to pay back all this additional money it was going to have to borrow to fund these tax cuts and fund this energy support package. And given that the British government borrowed about half a trillion um, to stop people, to pay people not to work and to stay at home during our three lockdowns over an 18-month period, um, I think the bond markets and the currency markets uh, got a little bit spooked. Um, the pound started to plummet against the dollar. Um, gilt ye yields um, uh, started to increase. Um, and uh, she suddenly began frantically U-turning. So she'd announced that the top the top rate of tax was going to be cut from 45p in the pound to 40p in the pound. That was reversed. Um, then um, uh, it, 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 she fired her chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, um, and appointed a, um, a, a zero Covid zealot and sort of one nation conservative centrist called Jeremy Hunt, um, whose surname people often get wrong, whether consciously or unconsciously. <laughs> Um, and uh, uh, but that didn't seem to do the trick either. He announced uh, uh, he, he, he essentially disavowed almost every measure announced in Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng's mini budget in the hope of restoring um, uh, Britain's uh, credibility uh, with the bond markets and the currency markets. And he did seem to stabilise things for a mm. bit. Uh, and then she got into a row with her Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, over immigration levels, part of uh, part of the government's uh, pro-growth strategy was to be a bit more relaxed about immigration when, uh, you know, a lot of the former Labour voters that switched to the Conservatives in 2019 switched because they're fed up with the current levels of immigration. And Suella Braverman thought that was a betrayal of those voters and a betrayal of the Conservative manifesto. So she resigned or maybe she was fired. It's not terribly clear. But uh, people began to think, good Lord, Liz Truss, you've lost your Chancellor. You've now lost the Home Secretary. Um, uh, the market don't seem to like what you're doing. You've reversed almost every policy you've announced. Uh, the parliamentary party began to rebel. There were chaotic scenes in the House of Commons uh, on Thursday. Uh, they were going to, it was a vote to, um, the Labour Party were trying to scupper the Conservatives' decision to lift the fracking ban. Um, and uh, Liz Truss didn't want them to scupper it. So she initially said that the vote on it was going to be a confidence vote, which meant that any Tories not voting her way would lose the the conservative whip and then she and then and then and then she said no no i've changed my mind it's not going to be a confidence vote after all at which point the chief whip and the deputy chief whip resigned in disgust and then there were chaotic scenes when liz truss was chasing the chief whip and the deputy <laughs> chief whip around the parliamentary estate begging them to reconsider she couldn't she didn't think she could survive if there was another high profile resignation from her cabinet um, and in the course of chasing the chief whip she herself abstained from this critical vote on fracking. So was she going to take the whip away from herself? Was it a confidence vote? Wasn't it <laughs> complete chaos in the House of Commons? Yeah. And uh, by, by the following day, by Friday, I think it was clear that the game was up and she made a very brief, less than 90 second resignation speech on the steps of Downing Street with her husband standing in the background with his fists clenched, looking very dour and unhappy. And she's uh, gonna go as soon as a new prime minister is in place. And thank the Lord, 
the next leadership election is not going to take three months. It's all going to be over within a week and we should have a new prime minister at the very latest by next Friday. Okay. And if it isn't Boris Johnson, and we'll talk about that in a second, I'm sure, it will be, I think, our <laughs> third prime minister um, in uh, less than two months, which uh, which isn't a great look. But uh, there well, it is. It's a very Chaos Italian England. look. Very, <laughs> the Italian <laughs> fashions are Italian. coming to England. Yes. Um, so, all right, I got a bunch of questions, Toby. Um, first, uh, this is going to be the most complicated episode of The Crown. <laughs> I, I can only imagine. Just, it's going to, you're going to have to set a, have to set a little brochure so we can follow it. Um, yeah. All it, this it, sounds like a chaotic first couple of months of a, say, the Biden administration. It doesn't sound, to American ears, it just sounds like, well, you know, they weren't prepared. A lot of crazy stuff happens. Usually when somebody gets into office the first time, there's a lot of mistakes. She didn't really have that. She wasn't, um, she hadn't clawed her way to the top. So she didn't have a lot of broken glass behind her. She didn't already have a lot of people. Uh, there were not a lot of heads on on sticks, as we say in politics, behind her, right? The politicians who seem to be the most powerful or the most effective when they get into the top job are the ones that have, have, have committed the most atrocities and uh, uh, stabbed the most people in the back and are, you know, climbed to a you know, mountain of skulls, to get to the top spot. She didn't seem like she's that person. But I mean, you know, what are you telling me she couldn't have held on? I mean, the American style is just to hold on, just to just to power through this period. And you trust that in three weeks, four weeks, it'll all be forgotten. But for some reason, I mean, does that not work at the UK? Well, it doesn't work. You've had three prime ministers in two. <laughs> yeah, the reason that doesn't work in the UK, Rob, is that um, the prime minister uh, is dependent upon the support of um, his or her parliamentary colleagues. You know, we have a kind of intermingling of the um, executive and legislative branch of the government. So unlike in your presidential system, where a president can cling on, even if um, he's lost the Senate and lost the House of Representatives, over here, if a prime minister loses the confidence of the House of Commons, it's very difficult for them to continue. I think the problem was that Liz Truss had lost the confidence of her own party in the House of Commons. Um, and one reason for that is because the part that the Conservatives are doing so badly in the polls. We're seeing record polling numbers. It looks like, uh, you know, not only will Labour on the current prognosis win an absolute majority at the next general election, but the Conservatives will win so few seats that they'll that the SNP, the Scottish Nationalist Party, will have more seats than the Conservatives and become the official opposition, um, uh, which is uh, a shocking development and deeply humiliating for the Conservative Party. And I think a lot of Tory MPs thought, my God, if we don't get rid of this woman, we're all going to lose our seats at the next yeah. general election. And m many of these people, Rob, are absolutely unemployable in any other capacity. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Are we, we we have that over here too. <laughs> Ricochet. Join the conversation.